Hi guys, I have awoken in Doomsday Trailer to a cold, rainy day here in the end times. Miraculously, I survived the flood of 14 last night without floating away here in the formerly drought-plagued wasteland of South Austin, Texas. Hallelujah, some rain still falling. And so since I am alive for another day, I do what I do every day here on Tuesday morning, May 13th, 2014. And that is to click on Yahoo News to find out how this planet is descending deeper into the end times. And I can't think of a better shot of the future right here today than Titan the Robot going shopping for seafood in Russia. It looks like Titan, I don't know which kind of, uh, what Titan is looking for today. Something that some Russian super trawler trawled out of the bottom of the ocean. Okay. Employees of a food stand take pictures of Titan a robot created by England Cyberstein Robots. Titan is a Jewish robot. And Titan was performing in Moscow yesterday. He was visiting Moscow, I guess from England, to be part of an interactive exhibition of the most recent advances in robotics. All right, and Titan worked alongside superstars, including Rihanna, Will Smith, and Jackie Chan, all cheering on Titan the Super Robot. Okay, before I return to the mainstream media, let's go over there and, and see what these uh, lefties over there at alternet.org are up to today and I can't believe it took this long. How many days have I been making this uh, uh, this call about this unadulterated horseshit story of these Nigerian schoolgirls? Finally, let's let Alternet explain to us what is going on over there. How Washington Hawks are cynically using kidnapped girls to justify U.S. military intervention in Nigeria. This is, uh, I don't know what I am listening to here, guys. I have, I have no idea what, uh, what I have set off here. Uh, where is this coming from? Anyway, uh, that is exactly what is going on over there in Nigeria. All right. The deployment of Western military advisors to help battle Boko Haram will only bolster a failed strategy. Yep. Okay. From Nigeria back here. How parasite corporations like Pfizer are chucking U.S. citizenship to escape from paying taxes. Hmm. Okay. From there to the price of limes. The soaring price of limes means trouble. Are Asian bugs and climate change the culprits? All right, uh, I have a lot to do on the uh, mainstream media. One more story here. <clears throat> Barack Obama is negotiating the biggest deal, the biggest trade deal in human history, and it would gouge the American economy. We are about to enter an economy-changing free trade deal, and the corporate media is silent. Uh-huh. 
I bet. And before we return to the corporate media, let's go over here to the Real News Network. The Real News Network and their feature they do, I don't know how often, called Reality Asserts Itself, where they're interviewing this man I'd never heard of until last night, but he's my new hero. His name is Colonel Lawrence Wilkerson. Lawrence, Colonel Lawrence Wilkerson was, I guess he worked in the Bush administration. He was Colin Powell's right-hand man. And this is, this, I, uh, apparently, this right-wing conservative man, this guy is no crazy hippie. And this is what this man has to say about what is going to happen on this planet in the 21st century. I hope I have this cued right. Take it away, Colonel. Because the planet is going to cast us off, or at least a sizable majority of us. Yeah, I, there's, there's no question in my mind about that. The planet will go on as it went on after the dinosaurs, but human life might not. There you go. There you go. Uh, I could not agree more with this uh, right-wing conservative colonel from the Bush presidency military. There you go. That sounds like uh, the balance of the 21st century to me. And okay, guys, I am simply going to just go down a list of stories I have picked up, uh, no particular order. Let's just go down the list as they came off the list of stories. Um, all right, back to the mainstream media. Where does this guy... Uh, this guy gets such crazy ideas that the planet is getting ready to cast us off. Well, maybe he reads the mainstream media, too. All right, as I say, in no particular order. A future of thirst. Water crisis lies on the horizon. As I'm drinking my cup of coffee, sip by sip. The next time your throat is dry as a bone and the sun is beating down, take a glass of clean, cool water, savor it, sip by sip. Because vital and appreciated as that water is, it will be even more precious to those who follow you. By the end of this century, billions are likely to be gripped by water stress and the stuff of life could be an unseen driver of conflict. So say hydrologists who forecast that on present trends, fresh water, fresh water faces a double crunch from a population explosion which will drive up demand for food and energy and the impact of climate change. There you go. Thank you, mainstream media, for mentioning the population explosion. Let's go back to, uh, let, let's go back uh, to our friend from the Bush era military for a minute. And that's the nature of the challenge that we confront in this century. In this century, in my grandchildren's lifespan, major, major impacts will begin to occur. Indeed, may already be occurring. Okay, let's stop right there and we will go to the next story on the mainstream media. Cat from Live Science Magazine today. Catastrophic collapse of West Antarctic ice sheet begins. Oh, wow. Okay. From Live Science. The catastrophic collapse of the massive West Antarctic ice sheet is underway. 
the biggest glaciers in West Antarctica are hemorrhaging ice without any way to stem the loss, according to two independent scientific studies. The unstoppable retreat is the likely start of a long-feared domino effect that could cause the entire ice sheet to melt, whether or not greenhouse gas emissions decline. Quote, these glaciers will keep retreating for decades and centuries to come, and we cannot stop it, said Eric Ringrignot, a glaciologist at the University of California. Quote, a large sector of the Antarctic ice sheet has now passed the point of no return. Let's go back to this, uh, this man from the Bush era, era military. One more quote from this man. Uh, Pacific nations, for example, like Palau, understand they're going to be underwater and they have to relocate their whole populations. These kinds of things are going to happen with a frequency and a drama that is going to convince everyone. But is it going to be too late? All right, thanks. There you go. Uh convince everyone that it will be too late. Okay, what is this madness I've gotten here? Oh, this is uh, MERS virus. A second case of the dangerous Middle East respiratory virus called MERS has been found in the United States, health authorities said. Monday. All right. The United States announced its first case last week. So now we're up to two. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's one thing we can expect more of in the end times. What's going on over there in New Mexico? I haven't uh, heard from New Mexico since that radiation leak. Now we see a day after 75 mobile homes burned to the ground in Texas, we see New Mexico wildfire forces evacuations and threatens college town. A wind-fed wildfire in New Mexico raged out of control on Monday, sending heavy smoke wafting over the outskirts of a college town and forcing local authorities to warn residents of a nearby community to evacuate. Mm-hmm. Okay, if I can find my cursor, we will go from New Mexico over to the South China Sea to the oil war ramping up in the South China Sea uh, from AP as we, the latest report from AP, Vietnam and Chinese ships fire water cannons at each other. All right. A Vietnamese patrol boat and several Chinese vessels blasted each other with water cannons Monday near an oil rig recently positioned by Beijing in disputed waters. This is according to Vietnamese media. And this is the latest incident in a dangerous standoff in the South China Sea between the two nations. And the Vietnamese newspaper said it was the first time that Vietnamese vessel, vessels have responded to aggressive Chinese actions close to the deep sea rig which was positioned May 1st in an area of the South China Sea claimed by both China and Vietnam. Blah, blah, blah. So what is going on in Washington? In Washington, Secretary of State John Kerry said Monday 
the U.S. and other nations involved in navigating in the South China Sea were deeply concerned about the aggressive Chinese action. And uh, John Kerry, he wants to see a code of conduct. A code of conduct between those two fighting over those, fighting over that offshore oil. And of course, uh, China just laughing off that Vietnam is going to keep them, their oil rigs, out of the Chinese Sea. Yeah, all right. From the South China Sea, let's hop across the planet to Ethiopia. Over there in Africa. I haven't been to Africa. Well, I guess we started off with those schoolgirls. All right. UN expecting to feed six and a half million Ethiopians this year. Six and a half million Ethiopians with their hand out hands out to the UN for food. The World Food Program will help to feed nearly six and a half million Ethiopians this year with the country hit by locusts. The biblical plague of locusts has been unleashed on Ethiopia. Neighboring war and sparse rainfall. Quote, we are concerned because there is the beginning of a locust invasion, and if it is not properly handled, it could be of concern for the population living there. And in the northern part of Ethiopia, there has been less rain than average for the third or fourth consecutive year. Ethiopia is also dealing with growing refugee numbers due to the conflict in neighboring South Sudan as more than 120,000 South Sudanese have crossed over into Ethiopia. Mostly women and children who are arriving famished, exhausted, and malnourished. Blah, 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 and this just goes on and on and on, those women and children. Okay, and let's go from Ethiopia up there to the top of the planet. What is Norway up to today? You think of Norway as these progressive, liberal environmentalists. Yeah, right. Okay. Let's see what Reuters news has coming out of Norway. Norway bets on global warming in Arctic oil and gas drive. I'll talk about this more in my climate meltdown rant tomorrow. Okay. Norway wants to let oil and gas companies drill in Arctic seas that were frozen as recently as the 1980s, even though some climate experts say it is too early to trust global warming to keep the ice away. <laughs> Russia is also showing new interest in the Arctic. Yep, yep, yep. Despite high cost in a region where governments are struggling to set safety rules after BP's 2010 blowout in the Gulf of Mexico. All right. And many companies including ConocoPhillips and, I guess, some European oil company, are applauding a plan by Norway to open the southeast Barents Sea to exploration as climate change thaws the Arctic. And this is Norwegian Energy Ministry, quote, 
uh, for Norway to continue to be a long-term reliable supplier of oil and gas, it is important to explore for and develop expected large resources in the Barents. There you go. And that's what's going on there. And, well, I'm already 20 minutes into this. I didn't think I would even have time. Let's just jump in uh, to the column of news. I won't have time to get to the bottom. It is 56 degrees in Austin, Texas right now, I see. All right. Uh, Ukraine, what's going on over there? Six soldiers ambushed and killed in the east here is okay the schoolgirls don't make the top three but they make the top of the column there's two related first there's the headline u.s flying manned missions to find nigerian schoolgirls and then there is another headline that the u.s is sending in unmanned drones to find those schoolgirls. I'm quite sure that is really what those U.S. drones uh, are looking for over there in Nigeria. Thank you, Alternet.org, for spelling out what is going on over there. It is, it, it, it is a, anyway, I've already told you what it is. All right, from there, we see the headline, Spying on millions of Americans in the United States of Secrets. There you go. For anyone who doesn't understand that, uh, about how that one works. Let's see. Most of these I've already picked out. So uh, I'm just going to run down the ones that I didn't highlight. All right, South Sudan ceasefire broken as rebels in army battle. Fighting between South Sudanese rebels and government troops raged on Monday, just days after a fresh ceasefire deal. Oh yeah. That ceasefire lasted uh, actually about a few hours, I think. All right. Here is Vietnamese workers protest at Chinese factories. This is one more story coming out of the oil war ramping up between China and Vietnam. And now... We have Vietnamese workers protesting at Chinese-owned factories. From there, a story about a budget Indonesian smartphone. Uh-huh. From there, nine mind-blowing facts about wind energy, no doubt, nine mind-blowing myths about wind energy. Climate change is here to stay. Climate change, once considered an issue for a distant future, has moved firmly into the present. And so I guess these guys are going to save the planet with their little windmills. Yep, 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 yep. I mentioned that in my Sunday Doomsday Sermon. Anyway, from that horseshit to this, probably not, this, from horseshit to no shit Sherlock. Study list dangerous chemicals linked to breast cancer. Certain chemicals that are common in everyday life have been shown to cause breast cancer in lab rats and are likely to do the same in humans. Hmm, think so. See, more stories about Nigeria schoolgirls, more horseshit on... 
the U.S. economy, don't need to waste my breath with that one. Let's see, here's how some billionaire venture capitalist is blocking access to the beach out there in California. Uh, I, 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 I'm even in my cynicism. I will try not to make a sick joke on this one. Five killed in Mother's Day, California car crash were on their way to Disneyland. Mm, D D. Here is a Supreme Court love triangle case that could make history. That's what the Supreme Court is up to. Here's flooding closes Chicago area highways. I understand that uh, South Congress Avenue, uh, one block from Doomsday Trailer, was shut down at 5 o'clock this morning as the floods raged in South Austin, Texas. Here is more stories on the West Antarctic glaciers in irreversible fall raising seas. Let's see. Here is Beijing adding armed police patrols. I've mentioned this before that uh, for the first time China is arming its police forces. I bet it is. D, D, here is how to get a job. I actually have a job this week, and I might have to be getting on to it and waiting for my boss to call me. Let's see. Anything when I got three minutes. All right. Here is the incredible material that could make our smartphones paper thin. All right. Paper thin smartphones. And the several stories on horse racing. More stories about Chicago floods. Here is a tour of a coal ash spill cleanup. That's a tour I would love to be on. All right, here is a new, a shocker from Dancing with the Stars. We have a Dancing with the Stars shocker. D, 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 what I got? Two more minutes. Uh, let's see. More stories about horse racing, the California drought. North Korea threatens to attack South Korea. North Korea threatened Tuesday this morning to wipe out South Korea's government. In a furious response, a day after a South Korean official said that North Korea must disappear soon. I agree. North Korea must disappear soon. All right. More stories on Nigerian schoolgirls. Sorry, guys. Red wine won't help you live longer. Yep. Uh, let's see. Article on circumcision going wrong. Yep. Fox unveils schedule cutting back American Idol. Oh, that's the shocker that American Idol has been cut back to one night per week, and we're going to end up with what is John Boner up to today? John Boner thinks he is literally living on borrowed time. 
Yep, John Boner, you are living on borrowed time as are the rest of us. We are all living on borrowed time as that uh, guy earlier was explaining. And here's just one reason we are living on borrowed time, but I got to wrap up this Tuesday, May 13th, 2014 rant and see if I've got time for my wacky conspiracy Tuesday rant before going to work for $12 an hour. Bye, guys.